All right, so let's talk about running elimination. Um, this is sort of inspired by problem 1.3, number one, um, just in case you're wondering like why this seems familiar. Okay, so the first things first, the elimination approach that the book takes is firstly motivated by systems of equations. So I have some matrix multiplication system here or matrix multiplication equation, right? So this is an equation of the form AX equals B. Are you guys all on board with that as an interpretation of what this means? Maybe ish? Okay, so um, it should be noted that this is a little bit of a silly example, but that's okay. So let me look at my equations here. So my top equation says I have X plus zero Y plus zero Z equals three. My second equation says I have X plus Y plus zero Z equals seven. And my bottom equation says I have X plus Y plus Z equals 12. You guys with me on that? Okay, so I'm hoping that you realize that this is a, a little bit of a dumb example. Comments on why this is a dumb example? Obviously, x is three, five is, or y is five, and z is, wait, what? Three? Well, you lost some cred when you said y was five. Y is three, z is five. Yeah, okay. So we can solve this essentially by inspection, right? You guys all see that? I know what X is from this top equation. So I want to note that Jordan's perspective of just saying, okay, dude, so X is three, let's just back substitute from there, amounts to a rearrangement of this system. So one of the things that you won't see me do particularly often in videos is rearrange a system. Um, that tends to be because I've already arranged systems so that they're in a um, reasonable place. One of the reasons I wanted to talk about this example in particular is that sometimes just rearranging the system will give you what you want. You guys see that? So my goal in elimination is to find the values of all three variables, essentially. There's a technique for doing this where you kind of say, okay, so this is the number I want. I'm going to put zeros underneath it. Then I'm going to get this number, and then I'm going to put zeros underneath that. Are you guys all familiar with that approach? No? Okay, good. Perfect. I so for clarification, I literally know nothing about matrices, so that's probably why. Okay, good. Um, so one option that I'm going to take that easy way out here. So the easy way out would be to rearrange equations. Uh, whoops. And let me not say that I'm applying that over here. I'm going to apply that over here. I don't really want to talk about rearranging matrix rows right now. I just want to talk about the system of equations. So one way I can do this is I can rearrange. So that top equation, right? The one with the most variables may as well go at the top. That seems legit. That second row can go in the second. And that last equation can go down here. You guys see this? Well, if I just drop the zeros here, you guys can all see that I would be able to back substitute my way out of this. Okay. Now, this thing is still not quite what the book's searching for. They'd really be searching for an upper triangular matrix. So first things first, an upper triangular matrix looks like one a system of equations like this, 
except instead of knowing what X is at the bottom, I would know what Z is at the bottom. You guys see that? Yeah, this is Gauss Jordan, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, so let's, um, let's look at this. And my goal is gonna be to say, okay, I'm gonna introduce my variables back in here. So you guys can all see my, my matrix here. You'll see that those coefficients correspond to this matrix. Okay, so these contain the exact same set of information. You're forgetting a one. Oh, yes, Anne. Thank you. So these now contain exactly the same information. Everybody sees that? Okay, now I'm gonna take this thing and my first goal is gonna to be to identify a pivot, which I'm gonna to tend to start with that top left number. Trust me, this is a good idea. My goal is to get everything below the diagonal to be zero. So I want to get rid of that and this and that. Those are gonna be my items to target. I'm gonna use that first row to do this. You guys cool that? So I'm gonna take my system. So I have one X plus zero Y plus zero Z equals three. I'm gonna write everything down with plenty of space in between it. So one X plus one Y plus zero Z is seven. And one X plus one Y plus one Z equals 12. Okay, so now my goal is to get rid of this one here. So I would like to take this first row, multiply it by something and add it to the second row in order to see this one go away. You guys all with me on that thought? So how many X's do I need to add to one X to have it go away? Don't overthink this. Two. If I have one X and, okay. Let me maybe phrase this a different way. If you have an apple, what do you need to combine with an apple to get it to go away? Eat the damn apple. Okay. Take it away. Minus one. Let me try that again. If you have a proton and you want it to go away, what do you combine with it? An electron. An antiproton. Right? To be fair, when you combine a proton and an I know, electron, I know. Proton. Shut up. It doesn't cancel out. Don't don't tell me how reality works. I don't want to know. <laughs> All right, so what I want to do is I want to take this 1x and I want to add minus 1x to it, right? So I'm going to take this first row, right? I'm going to multiply that whole first row by negative 1 and add it. So this is going to be minus row 1 that I'm going to put here in red. So that's going to be minus 1x, minus 0y, minus 0z, and minus 3. You guys with me on that? And then my elimination step, like I'm gonna take this whole thing here, I'm gonna turn it into a new system. And the way I'm doing that is I'm taking row two, right? And I'm making a new row two, that's the old row two minus row one. Are you with me on that? So if I had to read that, I would read that as, uh, whoops, new row two is old row two 
minus row one. Guys with me on that? So that's going to get me to a new system. The first and third things are going to remain unchanged. So I'm going to have 1x plus 0y plus 0z equals 3. My second row is going to change. I'm going to leave that blank for right now. And then here I'm going to get 1x plus 1y plus 1z is 12. You guys all with me on that? That second row, I'm just going to do these additions. Right? So I'm going to get 1x minus 1x is 0x's. Uh, I'm going to go just a second past time. Sorry. And then 1y minus 0y is going to give me 1y. 0z minus 0z is going to give me 0z. 7 minus 3 is 4. You guys with me on that? And then I'm going to continue to do steps like this. So this is now my new system. And my next step is going to be to target this guy. So I'm going to do the new row 3 is the old row 3 minus row 1. So that'll, get, that'll have rid of this one. Then my next to last step, or my last step, is going to be to do that same thing with this guy using row two. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'll throw another video example of this process into the um, into the modules. Any other questions before we call it a day?